What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Love and Marriage Detroit. This is Season 1, Episode 7, and let's get right into this review. So, we already know the girls are still fighting, okay? So, they are yelling, doing all of this, you know, back and forth. And Christina is trying to explain that, you know, Brandon is his own person. He has his own opinions. And basically, Kobe needs to handle whatever she needs to handle with Brandon because he's the one who said that she was the Kobe cat. And Kobe's point is, but what have you said to your husband for him to say those type of things? You know what I'm saying? I feel like both points are valid. However, they could have taken this conversation down a whole bunch of notches. Out of nowhere, we have Kobe apologizing to Christina. I don't know if she apologized because she genuinely felt like she was in the wrong or if she was just trying to, you know, smooth the situation over. I feel like it was more so so that way she could smooth the situation over because I'm like, okay, she apologized. Christina accepted it. And now they're talking about, oh, girl, you can come to my brunch. And, oh, I'm just so glad that we had this conversation. But I still feel like we did not get a real resolve. Like, so, Christina, why couldn't y'all work together? Because I'm still not understanding. Nonetheless, let's move on. So, Anthony, y'all, he said, listen, on the last episode, Brandon tried to play in his face and make it seem like he didn't know what he was doing and how nobody knows what Anthony does. Baby, we going to show you what Anthony does, right? So, we see Anthony, he is at a photo shoot, uh, I think that they were shooting like a lookbook for a company that's based in Detroit or whatever, and honestly, it just seemed like he was barking orders at people. I'm like, I don't know what you do still, like, are you a creative director, like, what's going on here? Nonetheless, Latoya shows up, right? So they talk about, you know, what went down at the, uh, what's it called? The Bible study. Now, at first, I guess things started off good. However, Anthony does have to tell her about how, you know, Brandon, he said the negative things about the publicist. And then he had the audacity to lie in his face. Y'all, I have to say, I think I'm on Anthony's side of this. I definitely believe that Brandon said it. And he does have the right to tell the publicist, especially if she's been his publicist for a while. They have a friendship. Hey, don't be trying to do business with them because they don't really like you like that. And on top of that, we cannot forget the fact that Christina, she ran off and told Russell that, you know, they were talking about Kobe and Russell. And that never happened because the publicist made sure to let us all know that those two were never mentioned. So, I don't know. It's something funny in this story, y'all. Nonetheless, um, Latoya, she talks about how, you know, she doesn't like drama. She already feels like Christina and Brandon always bring the drama. And she also mentions how she wants to have a cash trip where I guess they can all kind of settle their differences. I'm like, I already know. That's going to be a mess. But let's go ahead and move on. We have Christina and Brandon. They go on a date. You know, she tells him how she never felt safe in her marriage with him. And I'm like, you never felt safe with your husband? That's scary. Because this that means that this man has let people walk all over you this entire time. The entire 10 years, what, 10, 11 years that y'all been together. He has let people walk all over you, Christina. That's crazy. And you've constantly probably had to defend yourself and defend him while he sat there twiddling his thumbs. So um, she then tells him how he needs to get to know her because she's not the same person she used to be when they first met. And I'm just like, of course, you're not the same person that, you know, you used to be. You should be growing. You should be changing. People are ever evolving. And then he ends up questioning her if she felt like she knows him. Now, you guys, I gave her a side eye with her uh, answer because she's like, you know, I know you because like I pray about you. I pray for you. All of this stuff. And I'm like, but that's not answering the question. Both of y'all don't know each other. I think that's the problem. 
I think that you guys are changing because, like I said, people are always changing. I think y'all are together. Y'all in the house together. Y'all are comfortable with each other. But y'all are not growing together. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all are not doing things together to keep the other person involved. Y'all have a lot of work to do. So, she also goes on to basically tell us how his mama let him just run the house. He's never had to answer to nobody. He has always just, you know, done whatever Brandon wanted to do. And now, Chris is saying how, you know, she's going to hold him accountable. How he has to be accountable for all these things. All this stuff, right? That's cool and all. And maybe he did have a terrible, you know, parenting. I mean, his mom had a terrible parenting style and all that. But here's my thing, Christina. You've been with him for 11 years. Like, I feel like those are the types of things that you should have nipped in the bud 10 years ago. So now that y'all are in your 40s, you know what I'm saying? I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be easy for you to get Brandon to change. Because Brandon is definitely already stuck in his ways. You can tell, and you can't tell me nothing else about it. So I'm just kind of like, Christina, I don't know about this. Like, I get it. He may have a very strange, whatever, relationship with his mom. And his mom, you know, didn't exactly raise him properly. But girl, good luck. And also, I was giving Christina a side eye, though, because I'm like, why are you really acting like you running shit in this relationship when he got you crying half the time we done seen you? Like, I'm just curious, because to me, in this conversation, she was really kind of bossing up on him. Like, you know, you ain't going to be doing this to me. You ain't going to be talking to me like this. You're like, yo, mama let you do that type of stuff, but not Christina. And I'm just like, but Christina, he disrespects you in all types of ways. But you know what? We're going to let them rock out. Let's go ahead and move on. Anthony goes to see his friend, Lyric. First of all, I thought his name was going to be Lyric with a Q. Nope. Lyric. And these two guys have been friends for years, right? So he's like, yeah, I really want Lyric to be a judge for the showcase. Now, according to... uh. Anthony, this guy, he has worked in the industry. You know, he's a producer, a songwriter, all these things. Like, he even mentions how Anthony and Lyrique, they work together and wrote songs together. I don't know if these are songs that have actually made them money. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Ant has a hit song that we never knew about. I don't know. But nonetheless... As he goes on to mention who's involved, like, the guy's cool with Bravo. But when he brings up Brandon, I don't know what that was because the guy was like, oh, Brandon, okay. So, according to Anthony, they have, like, some type of petty beef going on. He's like, I don't know what that beef is, but both of their studios are right around the corner from each other. And really, they can be making money together, but they have some petty beef. So... Let's get into a little bit of tea, y'all. Lyrique lets us know that his facility is actually the original Star Factory facility, number one. And then he goes on to say, you know, Brandon is talented, but he just didn't pop. Which, that could very well be true. Brandon could be very well talented in what he does. But sometimes people, they just don't pop. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they need to find another avenue, you know what I'm saying, to get them where they want to be. For example, I just want to throw this out here. When I think of a person like Tiana Taylor, right? You know, she tried to be a music artist. She tried to do all these other things. And for some reason, it never really popped off for her like it should have. However, she completely changed her, her, her way of thinking and went the director route. Baby Girl has done acting. She has uh, now become a creative director. Like, she has found different avenues still within the same industry. You know what I'm saying? That has gotten her more opportunities. At least that's what I think. So maybe that's what Brandon needs to figure out. But nonetheless, this man, he lets us know that Brandon fumbled his most talented person. His most talented artist, he fumbled. 
Come to find out, Christina can sing, y'all. Like, the guy literally was like, Christina should have been a superstar. Like, she could actually sing. I worked with her back in the day. And Anthony was like, yeah, I kind of heard something that Christina can sing, but I never heard her sing. The man said, hold on, buddy. I got a track. He actually goes, plays the track, right? Now, you can tell that it's definitely a song that's dated, just by the way that it's written, because we don't write songs like that no more. But it does sound good. Christina sound good. Like, I can't even knock it. I'm like, Christina, let me let me find out you about to pull a melody hope. Let me find out. That you about to have a singing career after being on this show. I see you, girl. But nonetheless, Anthony, he does give her props. He's like, whoa, like Christina, she can actually sing. I don't know what Brandon is over there doing because Christina sings better than all the other girls that he pick up. You know what I'm saying? Talk about some, they have the star factor. No, they don't. Because let's not forget, we heard that girl who was singing her woo-woo-woos in the booth the last time. She ain't got that much talent. You should have invested in your wife 10 years ago. But that's not what you did. See, I'm telling you, when I think of Brandon and Christina, I'm still trying to figure out how they make your money. I really am. Because I'm like, which one of y'all really bringing the money in? Like, I don't feel like she's been an influencer that long, and he ain't made not a one star. So how are y'all, what's y'all day jobs? Like, did he work at UPS sometimes on the weekends or part-time or something? What's going on over there? But you know what? Let's just go ahead and slide on over to the next scene, which is Kobe and LaToya. They are meeting up so that way they can ride together to go to the brunch that Christina's having. So Kobe basically informs Latoya about her conversation that she had with Christina. And she also says that she still wants to have a conversation with Brandon because of what he said. Now, Kobe, she talks to uh, Latoya about how Christina called Russell on the phone, saying that Anthony was saying these negative things. And we we all know it's a lie. So Latoya is like, she's getting pissed off. Because you lied on my husband. I got to go to your event right now. And honestly, even though LaToya don't like drama, she's going to have to get into some drama with Christina. So let's slide on over to the Shut Up and Pray event. So both Chelsea's, they show up or whatever, and they have a similar outfit. And Kobe, she makes it a point to say that, you know, Brandon was there. And I'm just like, of course Brandon is here. It's his wife's event. Why wouldn't he be here? So she's like, well, I'm not going to talk to Brandon unless Russell is here. Okay, that's fine and dandy. Russell already told Brandon not to talk to you anyway. So it wasn't going to work. Nonetheless, you have Kobe's friend, Chelsea. She feel it away because of all the drama that Kobe has had with Christina. And I'm just like, honestly, girl, you can go home if you feel a way. Like, why are you at Christina's event if you don't really like her like that? And I get it, it's based on what went down with her and Kobe, but still, like, stop trying to make a scene about you. So Kobe then has to explain, like, you know, I talked to Christina, we're all good now. And for me, I just found this interesting because this whole conversation about how Chelsea is feeling away and all of that is happening in front of Christina's friend, Chelsea. And I'm just like, I see her. I keep I keep seeing her, you know, reach for her phone and she texted. And I'm like, I wonder if she texted Christina what's going down and how they talking about her low key. But nonetheless, um, Christina, you know, she gets on the microphone. She says a prayer and the brunch starts. So, We do see that the ladies are eating and LaToya tells them about how she's planned a trip for the couples to take. I was like, all right, cool. Next episode, we're going to see this trip. Great. So the pastor gets up there, you guys, because, you know, it's a whole prayerful event. So there's a pastor who gets on stage. She's up there preaching a good old word and it is hitting LaToya. Okay, LaToya is very moved. So now 
she's ready to move forward with a conversation with Christina. Now, I did not mind the way LaToya approached this conversation. She put her to the side. LaToya's tone stayed the same. She didn't yell. She didn't do anything like that. Um, And her idea of let's put this all out here on the table and not let it linger, I get it. Because as you let things linger, then you have probably have a conversation with your husband and all this stuff. He has input. More things build up. I get that. However, this was Christina's event. Could you have just taken her to lunch or something so y'all can have this conversation? But whatever. So she basically tells Christina, you know, that she had a conversation with Kobe. And that there were some things said about her husband. Now, here goes Christina out here playing like she don't know what's going on. Talking about some, well, what was said? Oh, oh, you're talking about that. Oh, yeah. Come on, Christina. You knew why we was here. So, Christina goes on to be like, oh, yeah, because someone texted me about blah, blah, blah. No. The publicist, Brittany, texted you. The person has a name. Why are you acting like it's just some random person who texted you? Cut it out, Christina. So, nonetheless, Christina is still saying that Anthony talked about Russell and Kobe. And, y'all, we saw with our own eyes that that was not true. Like, literally, Brittany made sure to say, no, Anthony never said anything about that couple. He only spoke about you and Brandon. Why is she adamant about putting them into this? Now, here's the thing. According to Christina, this was a text message that Brittany sent. If this is a text message, show us the messages. Show us the messages where she said Russell and Kobe's name. Because you ain't got them. So, the ladies are going back and forth. And I will say, they were definitely being calm about going back and forth. Because nobody was really looking at them like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, usually in the background, when people start to argue, everybody's like looking at them. But, they talk about their husbands and how each one of them... They have a track record of lying. And here's the thing. Anthony has done some messed up shady things and been all involved in Christina's marriage. And Brandon, he definitely have a lying problem because we know he be lying to Christina all the time. Okay. So next thing you know, we have Christina. She's giving her own little speech about how this is my event. I won't have this conversation at my event, my event, this, my event, that. Okay, girl, whatever. So LaToya is saying how, you know, you're conniving, you're uh, this, that, another. And I'm just like, that's funny that she used the word conniving because Kobe also said that Christina is conniving. So now we have Christina saying that, you know, she has issues with LaToya because she feels like LaToya inserted herself at the skate party. I don't think LaToya inserted herself in that. She was letting you and Kobe go back and forth with each other. She did not cut in. She did not try to cut y'all off. None of that. However, after y'all were done arguing, Kobe left out of there. She's like, you know what? I don't like this type of drama. I don't like, you know, what happened, basically. I don't think that was her inserting herself. I think that she was a bystander in some bullshit, and she had an opinion. So, LaToya, she feels like, listen, I have a degree, I've studied people's behaviors, all of this stuff, and she feels like Christina has a victim mentality. I agree. Christina definitely has a victim mentality, and like I have said previously, you don't have to interact with somebody and have a personal issue with them for you to see how that person moves and how they rock, okay? I can be observant and see if a person is mistreating somebody else I know, I know they might treat me the same fucking way. So I completely understand why LaToya feels the way she does about Brandon as well as Christina. Because she sees the way they mistreat and mishandle their friends. And it's like, whoa, I don't know if you ever going to try to cross me like that. But y'all, that was pretty much the episode. Um, Let me know what y'all thought about it. Are y'all on Kobe's side? Not sorry, not Kobe. Are y'all on Christina's side or are y'all on um what's her name? Latoya's side. And also, what y'all think about Christina's singing voice? Y'all think she can sing a little tune or what? Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to y'all in the next one. Bye guys.